Hey friends, welcome back. We're in session 12 of Explore the Bible. Today we move out of Proverbs and we go to a book of poetry, Song of Songs or Song of Solomon. This is a, a book that uh, we don't often read. We don't spend a lot of time in. It is one of the most unusual books, maybe a, a, a unique book. That would be the word for it, a unique book in the scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, there's nothing like Song of Songs. And so as we look at that today, we're going to just look at a few passages here in the beginning of the book, chapter 2 and chapter 3. Uh, you ha it's not long. It's eight chapters long. I think you can read through it pretty easily. But it is a book of poetry. And so poetry we take differently, just as Proverbs had a different way of uh, understanding it, and you had to look at it in a certain way. Poetry is exactly the same in that you have a different way to look at it, but you don't look at it like Proverbs. You don't read it like a narrative, like a story. You don't read it like uh, the teaching, maybe didactic material that comes out of the letters of Paul. We don't read it like um, uh, the stories of uh, uh, historical stories of, say, uh, Saul, uh, Samuel or uh, you know, the stories about him or stories about David, uh, the stories about Solomon, the things that come out of uh, Old Testament, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, Samuel, 1st, 2nd Samuel, Chronicles. It's not like that. It's different. It's poetry. So there is interpretation that takes place. It's somewhat like the Psalms, uh, but Psalms is really God-focused for the most part, God-focused, and Song of Songs is focused between a couple, a uh, husband and a wife, a man and a woman who are falling in love, who go through a courtship and then get married in their relationship. There's not a lot of mention of God. There's not a truth. You know, there's not a statement of, and this is how it ought to be. It is a feeling book. Okay, the danger in a feeling book is that we can allow our feelings and our emotions to interpret for it. So out of this book, we get, we get a sense of things, but our the truth that we understand about relationship, the truth that we understand about sex between a man and a woman, a husband and a wife, comes out of the didactic material, the teaching material. That's where we get the truth. Uh, but the feeling we can certainly gain when we read Song of Songs. So let's look at a little bit of it today. We start here in verse chapter 2, verse 15. Catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, for our vineyards are in bloom. Vineyards is a, a metaphor throughout the, the book of Song of Songs uh, for love and the relationship, the love between them. They go to the vineyards. There, there's constant reference to the beauty of the vineyards and those kinds of things. So here this passage talks about the foxes that ruin the vineyards. And, and I think it's pretty simple to see what this passage is saying. It's saying we have to watch out for the little things, the destructive actions, the the negative attitudes, the the wrong words, that the small things, that if we leave them unattended, they will injure and ultimately destroy a relationship. So be careful about the little things that come in, seep their way into that relationship, because those little things, if left unattended, will grow and they will become big things, right? And the, so that's kind of the negative side. You catch the foxes. You catch the little things that are hurting that relationship. The other side of that is you do the things that, that uh, protect that relationship. Part of the things that we do to protect a relationship is we, we take care of the little things, right? We, the little foxes, we, we deal with those things. The love is starting to take off. This relationship is starting to build, and you have to watch out for the little things that will destroy it. That is so true for us in our lives, and, and especially if you think about uh, your marriage relationship, watching out for little things, not allowing small things to grow, and not allowing small things to fester. And in Ephesians, he talks about not letting the sun go down on your anger, and this idea of dealing with issues. Dealing with disagreements uh, in a timely fashion, in a way that takes care of them so that we can then move on with life. Take care of all of these little attitudes that we, that we have, that, uh, the, the little actions that we uh, slough off and think, oh, they shouldn't be worried about that. It's not a big deal. Or the things that we say that, that are hurtful. And, and we think, well, they just need to get over it. Well, you know, maybe we need to apologize and stop saying it. 
Okay, deal with the little things because if you don't, they will become big things that will destroy that relationship. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, the next couple of verses here, verse 16 and 17. My love, and this is the woman speaking, by the way. So she says, my love is mine and I'm his. He feeds among the lilies until the day breaks and the shadows flee. Turn around, my love, be like a gazelle or a young stag on the divided mountains. I just wanted to look just kind of at this first part here. My love is mine and I'm his. There is this tremendous um, relationship that is building and growing here and this giving of one to another. Uh, the giving of the self, the, the total commitment, the, the um, surrendering of, of ownership of your own life. Say, uh, he is mine and I am his. Th this is the surrendering, right? I I'm not my own and, and he's mine. It's I'm his and he's mine. This is a total surrendering. That's what she's saying here. I've given myself completely and he has given himself completely to me. This is so important. That, that we understand the nature of uh, the marriage relationship, the nature of this love relationship that we have um, is so important to realize that it is not about what I get. It's not about me getting things. It is about me giving myself. That I have to, I give myself to my wife, that I give everything that I have to her, all of who I am, I've given to her. This is the surrendering of ownership over my own life. This is the submitting to one another in love in Ephesians 5. This is what it means to submit. That is to give yourself completely. We give ourselves completely to the other. We surrender ownership of our own lives. We give up our goal, uh, my goals for our goals, right? I give up um, what I want to happen in my life for what I want to, for what we want to happen in our life, right? This is a complete surrendering uh, to give yourself. This is the total commitment that is required to build a strong marriage. You want to build a strong marriage, and you can have a marriage, but if you want a strong marriage, you're going to have to give yourself completely over. Okay. Now, next thing, uh, chapter three, verses three and four. And there's this. Uh, story and some people think it's kind of a dream that she has about searching the city looking for her love looking for him searching for him and she says the guards who go about the city found me and i asked them have you seen the one i love i just passed him when i found the one i love i held on to him and would not let him go until i brought him to my mother's house to the chamber of the one who conceived me there is this seeking out for the one she loves and it's like a dream sequence where she is um, uh, trying to find her true love, trying to find the the one that she is going to give herself to. And then when she finds him, I like this, I held on to him and would not let him go. I was not going to give up on that. When she found the one that she loved, she held on to him. She wouldn't let him go. She brought him to her mother's house. And she noticed that this is not anything untoward at all. She's bringing him to her mother's home, introducing him bring into the family. You know, you're going to be a part of our family. She is hanging on for all that she's got to the one that she loves. A beautiful picture of this love that she has and seeking out this one and, and then the great love that she has for him. And then that ends with this uh, verse five it says, young woman of Jerusalem. Uh, this is young women. Listen, I've got a notice for you. I charge you by the gazelles and the wild does of the field. I don't know. I've never heard that kind of an oath, but there you go. Do not stir up or awaken love until the appropriate time. Don't rush. Don't get in a hurry. Don't try to make something happen before it's going to happen because you can't. All right? don't, don't get ahead of God. Don't worry about God's timing. Wait on him for the appropriate time. When the Lord deems it so, the Lord makes it so, be patient and wait on God's timing, the appropriate time. You cannot, if we try to stir up and awaken this love when it's not the appropriate time, which I think also talks to not the appropriate one, we, we bring in negative things into our life, um, consequences, negative consequences and, and hurt and pain that we should not have. Wait for the one that God has for you. Wait for that time. Hey, this is a tough passage. It's a tough book. 
But we're going to spend another week in it. And it's hard because it's not the normal thing we look at. But I think we're going to enjoy it. We'll be in it again next week. So thank you for watching. Thanks for being a part of uh, this channel. Subscribe, like, comment, those kinds of things. Let me know what's going on and how the, uh, how the study's helping you. And we'll see you next week.